former WBA, WBO, flyweight champion of the world, El Gallo, Juan Francisco Estrada. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing yellow with red, officially weighing in at 114.8 pounds. An outstanding record, consisting of 43 victories, 39 by knockout. He has four defeats and one draw. From Sisaket and Bangkok, Thailand, the reigning, defending, WBC, super flyweight, champion of the world, Wisaxil Wangek, a.k.a. Swissaket Surungvisai! Come on, come on, only, only two. Him only or you only, not both. Come here, Bank. For exchange of flags, please, fellas. Okay. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Put it in. Put it in. It is now. I gave you both instructions. I want to remind you, listen and please follow my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Bank, tell him these trunks are high. I'm going to let the action work in here. Estrada, yours are right at the belt line. I'm going to let it work in here as well. Again, good luck. Fight hard. Fight clean. Go back to your corners. Thanks, Mike. This era in this tiny weight neighborhood is being defined by fights like this, by this fight tonight. Much as a previous era in a different weight class, also a small one with Morales and Barrera and Juan Manuel Marquez were defined by the fights you saw among those, among that group. Chocolatito, now Soren Visay has entered into it. Estrada, these fights, this fight tonight, will go a long way toward defining this era at Superfly. And Andre Ward, as the fight begins, I come back to that three or four pound weight advantage unofficially that Soren Visay apparently enjoys in the ring. That could be significant because he is a come forward tank. It could be, but it also could work against him. If he took the weight off too fast, sometimes the body will crash the weight back on. It'll give it to you just like you took it off. So we gotta let the fight unfold to see what type of extra weight that is. So visibly, so on this side is clearly the bigger fighter. Stronger upper body, for sure. Bigger legs as well. Estrada is a classic stylist. He's been waiting for this moment. Has, to, has had to fight a who's who of the weight neighborhood to get back here after losing a very close fight to Chocolatito. Chocolatito's most significant win of his career. Soren Visay giving Chocolatito obviously his most significant loss, his only losses. Estrada's been waiting to prove that he's not just among the best, but that he is the best. And both guys have landed some clean shots in the early going. But Estrada knows. He told us in the fighters meeting, I'm not the stronger guy. Soren Visay is probably more powerful than me. He said, but I've fought tough guys who can hit before. I know what I need to do. And so far, he's given a good account of himself. When you look at the four losses on Srisaket Sorong Visay's record, it's very important to remember that two of those losses came in his first two professional fights. And talk about being thrown to the wolves. In his very first professional fight, he thought he fought the Japanese fighter Akira Yaegashi, who was one of the best fighters in the division at that time. Unreal. Hard left hand by Sorong Visay. Estrada took it well. There is a sense with Sorong Visay, he still has something to prove. Most feel he lost the first fight against Chocolatito. He was given a decision. And even in the knockout win against Chocolatito, there was a feeling heading into the fight that Chocolatito may have been a shot fighter. Or may have gone up too far in weight. That 115 pounds was simply too big for Chocolatito. 
who had been dominant at 108 and 112. Good straight right from Estrada. Crowd loves that. Precision. You can feel that it's an Estrada crowd. But the way Soren Visai knocked out Chalk Latino made a statement. It was a, he's a scary kind of power puncher. But even when you're on top, Max, you know it's always something to prove. In this sport, you're only as good as your last fight anyway. Good, quick left-hand counterpunch there by Estrada as Soren Visai was rushing after hearing the 10-second clap. And there's the bell. Good, good. Very good, very good, very good. Very good. Yeah. Good, good. Use your, use your fun hand, use your fun hand, use your jab. Start throwing your left, start throwing your left. Start faint. Faint and then throw the hook. Faint and throw the hook. Throw the straight and then the hook. Straight and the hook. Stay busy, stay busy on your feet. Stay busy on your feet. Very good, very good, very good. Breathe, breathe, breathe. We need you to breathe. Andre, I'm always delighted to see Jack Reese in the ring. To me, he's a very smart, no-nonsense referee. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, he's refed several of my fights. Um, He's uh, no nonsense, like you said, and he's going to make you abide by the rules. He also thinks a lot about refereeing, takes the job very seriously. As he should. Stop! One thing I took away from the fighter meeting with Estrada is. He gave Sorum Visa his credit. Sometimes fighters, as a defense mechanism, they'll try to shield themselves from the strengths of their opponent to make themselves feel better. Estrada's a veteran. He knows I have to acknowledge what Sorum Visa does well so I can prepare physically but also psychologically. So right now he looks like he knows so Sorum Visa is the more powerful guy. He knows about the big left hand but he's doing what he has to do to negate the power of Soren Visay at the moment. Yes, it seems to me Estrada has been outboxing Soren Visay so far. Usually pressure fighters take a few rounds to start really cooking. And Soren Visay is a pressure fighter. The question is, if and when he starts cooking, how does Estrada react to those power shots? Our interpreter, Jerry Olaya, has just let us know that between rounds one and two, and this is interesting, Andre, in terms of the notion of downplaying what the other guy can do, and you were giving Estrada credit for saying, you know, that he understands who Soren Visay is. Between rounds one and two, Estrada said to the people in his corner, this guy definitely has big time power. Yeah, but if we didn't hear that, we wouldn't be able to tell from Estrada's body language that he felt that. That's right. That's what being a veteran fighter is all about in a championship fight. You don't show your weaknesses. You don't show the way you actually really feel. And when a fighter is going up against an opponent with big-time power, if he fights like he's scared in boxing, that's called being a scary fighter. If he fights as a scary fighter, the irony is he's more likely to get hit with big shots. Estrada is fighting with courage, and therefore his defense is likely no to be better than if he was overly concerned with it. You know, heighten his senses the way they're supposed to. Jack Reese rules it a trip and gets him back into action in a hurry. Great right hand by Estrada. And another great right hand by Estrada. And the third. Precision, Jim. Precision. It's not the hard shot. It's the accurate shot. That was an excellent round for Juan Francisco Estrada, who demonstrated his counter-punching mastery against Soron Visa. 
next Saturday. It's an intriguing light heavyweight doubleheader with big potential ramifications. First, hard charging Dimitri Bivol attempts to show he's tops in the division against Sullivan Barrera. Then, Sergey Kovalev aims to show he's still the crusher against Igor Mikalkin. April 28 brings middleweight Daniel Jacobs back to his roots in Brooklyn, New York to face Macy Edge Seleski of Poland. Also that night, undefeated heavyweight Jarrell Big Baby Miller, also from Brooklyn, faces Frenchman Johan Duhapal. And there's Bivol seated here at ringside. Next Saturday, across the country against Sullivan Barrera, the soft-spoken Bivol, and you see the gentle smile there, is a fearsome puncher who is putting on quite a show at this point in light heavyweight fight. And I love that matchup because Sullivan Barrera will find out about Bivol. Bivol will have to answer some of the questions we have about any prospect. And if he doesn't have to, that will speak to just how devastating a fighter he is. If you have any boxing skill deficiency, Sullivan Barrera will find it. He couldn't beat Andre Ward. But he looks like he can beat just about anybody, uh, anybody else. Couldn't win a round from Andre, as it turns out. That, that win's looking better and better for you, Andre. It is, but Barrera's the real deal. He, he's a very, very crafty fighter, experienced fighter, Cuban background. He's the real deal. Any questions we have about Bivol will be answered in that fight against Sullivan Barrera next week. Round three of a scheduled 12. Teresa Katsoran Visay in the yellow with red trim. Juan Francisco Estrada in the black with gold. So far, Estrada, who came in as a favorite, actually, you could see why. Because on paper, Soren Visay's style plays into Estrada's counters. But because Estrada is not impossible to hit, and Soren Visay is such a powerful puncher and body destroyer, it really is, as I mentioned off the top, Jim, a pick em kind of fight, and now we're seeing Soren Visay start to really unload with some shots. Well, uh, there are some interesting CompuBox statistics regarding Soren Visay. In terms of numbers, he is the most body punch centric fighter in the sport, and he's the most power punch centric fighter in the sport. He is coming to take your body. And, and to the and craft, no secret about it. Exactly, but due to the craft of Estrada, he's not able to get those same body shots off tonight. Estrada's taking his punch count down just a little bit. And inviting him to throw upstairs rather than downstairs. I mean, the question is not his game. So far in this fight, I would rather be Estrada in each of the rounds. And if you look at what Estrada's doing, he's not over committing, leaving himself open for the big shots of Solon B side, even though he got hit with a few punches there. Estrada's touching to the body, but he's staying in range. He'll turn a left hook over if Soran Visay overcommits, and he'll stick a jab out where need be, but he's not overcommitting. It's too early in the fight for that. And Max, at this moment in this round, I'm not certain that I at agree. the end of the round, I'm going to want to be Estrada. I agree. I think Soran Visay turned the tide, as I said that, Jim, and has landed some shots that you could see have concerned Estrada. Well, the concern will always be there because this man has bricks in both hands, but we got to see Sorong Visay show something else. But he's starting to loosen his hands. He's starting to let them go. And just by doing that, Andre, he's having much greater success. He is, but Estrada's answering. I'll tell you what. I don't care how great a boxer you are, and Estrada is a great boxer. You're going to fight Sri Sorong Visay. You'd better be ready to fight. It is a fight. No, no one's getting off easy tonight. And there is Estrada's wife, Guyana Gallardo, or Gallardo. Beautiful and nervous. Perhaps a little bit more, all right? Dame la vaselina. All right, give me the vaseline. Listen, let me tell you something. Well, just one thing, okay? When he's slipping the punch here, it's a straight shot. Right, and then you bring it up. Or a string with the right and bring him up, okay? Here we see Estrada take a half step back, turns over a short right, and a left uppercut to the chin of Soren Visay, similar to the great Juan Manuel Marquez, who is Estrada's favorite fighter and idol. To my, by my lights, the most uh, skillful and creative counterpuncher in the last 20 years, Juan Manuel Marquez. I agree with that. Amazing counterpunching skills. We enter round four of a scheduled 12. 
Harold Letterman, our unofficial ringside scorer, as always. How do you have the first three, Harold? Okay, Jim. I got a two rounds to one. 29, 28. Uh, Srisiket, Saw Rungvisai. Uh, you know, Jim, I just think that Saw Rungvisai is the harder hitter, and I think he's doing more damage. But uh, in round two, certainly Juan Francisco Estrada won that round. He, he, he boxed really well. And, and saw Ron Versailles didn't get him as often. But saw Ron Versailles had a good round in the first, and I thought he had a decent round in the third, but this is a very, very close fight. Two rounds to one, Srisic had saw Ron Versailles. I agree with Harold, except I flipped the first round, and I think Estrada's up two to one. Hey, this is the same as in the last fight. We've got a very close fight. Intelligent judges with great backgrounds could easily score the rounds differently, and there'll be a strong argument either way. The run to the side, the way he calmly comes in and just throws those bombs and acts as though the counters don't bother him, is the classic power-punching pressure fighter. Estrada's calmness and experience will serve him well in this fight, I think. You could knock Rocky Marciano's nose off his face, and he would act as though it didn't bother him at all. Marciano's who I have in mind when I say that. Estrada's a guy who likes to step on the gas in the second half of a fight. He likes to establish himself in the first half, and then he starts to pick it up down the stretch. Well, we mentioned that CompuBox statistical definition by which Soren Visai was the most body punch centric fighter in the sport, and that is changing before your very eyes. And you've already pointed out, Andre, that Estrada is doing things to make sure that he can't land as many body punches as he has in previous fights, and it's working. He's landing three and a half body punches per round compared to 9.1 per round in his last seven fights coming in. So that's a big change to which Soren Visai is going to have to adjust. Soren Visai's fighting like he knows he has the power, the punching power to change the fight in a moment. But Estrada right now is getting his as well. And he's also looking at shots that he's not taking right now that he wants to take as the fight progresses. And he's been doing that all fight, I think. But Soren Visai in the last head. couple of rounds, just by being more active, has tightened it up. No doubt. No doubt. Good counter from Estrada right there. Ten seconds to go in round number four. Big round. Right Eastside right comes on, lands a hard left hand, lands another hard left hand, and takes one shot from Estrada. But that was a big rally at the end of the round for Suiza against Soren Visai. Started with a lead right hand from Soren Visai. Good, good, very good, very good. Very good, I need you to keep it up. Just like that, just like that. Let him, let him come in, let him in. Left and right, left and right. Left and right, left and right. Yes, keep active, keep active, left and right. Here we see Sorong Visa shoot the left hand that misses and, and does what we call a swivel jab. Brings his jab back to the face of Estrada and it definitely got Estrada's attention. That swivel jab is like a power punch. It is a power punch. It was like a swivel head, more like. In round four, Rung Visai landed a fight high. Six body shots. Getting there, slowly but surely. <laughs> Crowd is a little quieter now. You know, another thing Sorun Visai has done in this fight is by not attacking with reckless abandon. He hasn't added to the power on Estrada's counters. He's not running into counters. And that's, well, there he did. That looked like a clean punch, but also a slight push. And Jack Reese sees the push and rules it not a knockdown. Crowd doesn't like it. They would love for Estrada to get a knockdown point at some point. Soren Visai reacts as though he's getting up from a knockdown. But you see why running into the shot is twice as devastating. It's like a home run hitter facing a fastball pitcher. The harder it comes in, the faster it goes out. And Sorung Visai, when he attacks with more reckless abandon, gives Estrada greater power-punching, counter-punching opportunities. 
and you can tell that that's Estrada's game plan. Like he wants Sorum Visai to overcommit and run into one of his shots so he can do damage uh, and ultimately get Sorum Visai's attention. And that's a way in which Sorum Visai has uh, progressed as a fighter as opposed to early in his career. He takes little half steps back. He, he disrupts the rhythm of the counter puncher. He doesn't simply run forward. And, and you see that. You can see Sorum Visai thinking. He has a game plan. To the, to the naked eye, it may not seem like it. It may seem like he's a straightforward, all-power guy, but he is thinking, and he knows Estrada's a crafty, crafty fighter. He's discovered that if he feints to the body or throws the right hand to the body, he might get a free shot upstairs with the left hand. Or when he takes that little half step back, the counter puncher is a little afraid to counter because if he extends himself, not only does he waste the energy of the shot, but he leaves himself open to a Soren Visai's attack. Look at the size of Soren Visai's calf. I mean, that's almost unnatural for a 115-pound fighter. Yeah, I'd pay big money to have those calves. <laughs> Good straight left hand to the body by Soren Nice Visai. straight left hand. Hard left hand, left hand shot upstairs. Affected Estrada. And essentially, he's landing that because he's basically aiming it at the chest, center mass. And he can adjust last second where he wants to take it, upstairs or down, based on the defense. And even if you even if you're taking a puncher's another slip or a push from Estrada. Alright, calm down. Come even if you're taking a puncher's punch as well, the problem is they're still draining you, whether they're to the head or to the body. They're gonna feel feel, feel them in the latter part of the fight. Good Hard fight right. hands by both fighters. Absolutely. Boy, there have been some real good shots upstairs exchanged toward the end of that nice round. round. Now Soren Visai turns around, lifts his gloves, and plays to the crowd in his corner. Kind of thing I don't think you'll ever see Estrada do. Good, good, good. Cinco de Mayo, it's the rematch we've all been waiting for as Canelo Alvarez faces Gennady Golovkin for the second time. Back in September, their first fight was judged a highly disputed draw. This time, both superstars are looking for a more definitive outcome, knowing both their legacies are on the line. Don't miss it. May 5, only on HBO Pay-Per-View. We've had two or three of these in this fight. Here we see Estrada land a left hook or block from Soren side, but you clearly see both fighters' legs tangled up. Great call from referee Jack Reese. Pretty doggone close. Jack Reese. Very effective, brilliant referee. Round six of a scheduled 12. The power puncher, here's Soren Visai, has an advantage that almost seems unfair. Estrada has to work harder to get the same effect. He can counter once or twice, hit Soren Visai just right, and Soren Visai lands one shot and seems to negate the work. And you begin to get the impression that Estrada needs to find another tactical answer. Another way to keep Soren Visai off balance. In the last round, it was becoming a walk-forward sledgehammer affair for Soren Visai. Good right-hand body shots by Soren Visai. Very calmly thrown to the body. That good little rhythm disruptor is another subtle difference in Soren Visai's game. Now, compared to a few years ago, Andre, he throws change of pace shots, not everything with full force. He's definitely thinking in there. Showing more wrinkles in his game. A softer straight left hand that lands and disrupts Estrada without looking for the knockout on that shot. Even though this is against conventional wisdom, if Estrada wants to have success against a puncher like this, he's going to have to get closer. You don't run from the power. And I'm not saying Estrada's running, but you don't stay away from it. You actually go to it, and you get mid-range and in close. Estrada has a great inside game, but he's got to be willing to bite down on his mouth guard and get in there if he's going to have some more success. Because where he's where he's playing right now, it's dangerous ground with a guy like Soren Visai. At the end of Soren Visai's power, you mean? Absolutely. Ever since the move to weigh-ins the day before the fight, more than 30 years ago, Weights in boxing have now become so deceptive. We call this super fly. 
They weighed in under 115 pounds. But tonight, in reality, in the ring, Soren Bisai is a hard-punching junior lightweight. And Estrada is a skilled boxing featherweight. Super duper fly. Yeah. You mentioned Sorong Visai thinking, Andre. He is thinking step for step with a thinking man's fighter, which for a power puncher is very encouraging. Yeah, it's impressive. It's impressive. I didn't think he would show this much nuance tonight. Uh, even though I would like to see Sorong Visai use his right jab a lot more. The left hand that he's looking for, he can get it if he blinds Estrada with the jab. But again, that's a lost art in the sport. Everybody wants to be the two-fisted attacker, and they don't want to use the jab. That said, he just outboxed Estrada for about a 30-second stretch in the box. middle of the ring. Yeah. In fact, we're about to go to Harold Letterman for his score, and I'm fascinated to see. After he had it two rounds to one early for Sorung Visai, does he now have it five rounds to one well, no, for well, Sorung no, Visai? Harold, what's the answer to that? Okay, Jim, I got it five rounds to one. For Soren Visa, just like you said. You know, Jim, he, he's working the body really well, you know. We've been saying over and over and over that he's the best body puncher in the world. Well, he's certainly showing that tonight with that left hand. I mean, uh, Juan Francisco Estrada keeps walking in and keeps getting whacked in the body by, by Srisa gets so wrong besides left hand. Uh, but I think Chris and Ben Swarung is the stronger guy. I think he's landing more punches, and he's winning round after round after round. I've got his five rounds to one, 59, 55. Chris has Swarung this side. And I see a faint hint of discouragement in the face and the body language of Juan Francisco Estrada, who is trying to function against a bigger, stronger man. Let's not forget, Estrada lost the first half of the Quadras fight, too before storming back to win. Great point. That's who he is. He's a back half of the 12 rounds uh, type fighter. He right. to close the show. He's not a front runner. He's a thoroughbred. Still think he might have to find the tactical answer. It's a little something different to change what he's doing. Very difficult if you allow Soren Bisai to get into a rhythm and a pattern. Yeah, but you know, that pattern is a, is a, very impressive so far. He's baiting Estrada into leading at times and actually being the counterpuncher. Good left hook from Estrada. Even the timing just there on that soft one-two. Soren Visai took the half step back. Estrada led, and then once he was a slightly off balance, Soren Visai threw a quick one-two. by Estrada. Through the years, Jim, a dangerous, in a good way, evolution when the young, crude, power-punching brawler learns the finer points of boxing. He becomes extremely dangerous. We saw it with Marco Antonio Barrera, and Soren Visay is showing a version of that. How when you refine the technique of a guy with this much power, it becomes a very difficult proposition. You see Soren Visai thinking, like we've been saying, you see him look low and shoot the overhand left high. That, that's a thinking man's game. He's not just trying to kick the door down. He's checking the back door. He's checking the windows. He's checking the side door. He's trying to find different ways to get in. Main thing is he's coming to rob your house. But I still say if Soren Visai picks up the jazz, and I don't want to say pick up because I don't think he's used it at all tonight, but he, if he starts to use the jab, those big shots, namely the left hand that he's looking for, he'll get that. But he's got to start with the jab. Meantime, what does Estrada have to do, Andre? He hasn't committed any great sins that I can see, and yet he seems to be losing. I think the sin that, that Estrada's committing is he's content with where the fight is. He hasn't been knocked down. I'm sure he's been buzzed several times, and he doesn't want to get knocked out. He has to get mid-range and in close. He has to challenge the power of Solon Visai in a smart way.
Seven rounds in the books. Five rounds still to go. World supremacy at 115 pounds on the line. You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long. I thought you were up, but they said we're down. No, you got to press now. You got to pressure. They have us really down, eh? You can't stay there and, th and not throw. You've got to throw. Throw over the top with power and lively. Be sharp. You're waiting for one shot of his? What? You're waiting too long. You're waiting too long, Juan. Are you okay? Yes. Here we see the tail of the fight. We see Estrada land a hammer, but we see Soran Visai land a sledgehammer. That's the difference. You know what's crazy fight. about that? Estrada landed the technically much better punch. It should have been the more effective punch. Soran Visai's shot was more of a slapping kind of shot, and yet it landed with more authority. He's simply heavier handed. He has thudding power. He has unusual thudding power. How else? Could you reverse your career the way he did? Left Muay Thai behind, moved from Thailand to Japan, got thrown to the wolves, was knocked out in his first two fights, and more or less came up under the radar. How many people would have paid attention when he had three losses and a draw in his first five fights? But from there on, it was a steamroller. Lost to Carlos Cuadras in a fight that was stopped because of a cut that was created by a butt on Quadras. And then came in, got a highly uh, controversial decision over Chocolatito. Oh. And then an eye -like. Great left took by Estrada, his best punch in a while. Estrada boxing more sharply this round, period. And Andre, to your point, seems to be getting a little closer with the range. And beating Soren B side of the punch. Taking over the role of the attacker. Estrada has to get closer if he's going to find success he's listening to his trainer. You heard the big speech from the trainer between rounds. Estrada has paid attention. It's the difference between okay? being a back foot go. fighter, as they say in boxing, and yes, being an aggressive counterpuncher. Soran Bisai doesn't care whether that was an official knockdown or not. He wanted Estrada to taste the cap. Yeah. People don't realize that if you get pushed down, if you slip, it takes so much energy just to get yourself back up. So even though it wasn't a punch, <laughs> that's a point for Sorbonne Visa in terms of just... He knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nuances of the fight. The he knew fight. that Estrada was changing the fight, had made a tactical adjustment that was putting him on the defensive. He said, hey, go down. Let me put you on pause for just a second. Yep. Nevertheless, it's a very good round for Estrada, and it's coming just in time. Still it's is. getting closer. Yes. Still is. First round, he's won in a while. And yeah, then he's going to have to take, and the risk here is that Soren Visai can unload a fight-ending shot at this range. At any the moment, risk he's going to have to take. If that's the any risk that I have to take, you're exactly right. Now, stakes go up as Estrada decides that he's going to try to win the fight. Oh, big shot from Soren Visai, taken well from Estrada. Puncher also has the advantage in terms of scoring. Because when the guy with a reputation as the lighter puncher lands really vicious shots, sometimes the judges don't give him the same kind of credit as when the puncher answers back one or once or twice, even if he's been out punched. And then what happens psychologically to the puncher when he lands his best shot, and you look at him and you hit him back? That's what Estrada's finding out this round. Good, nice, short body shot from Estrada right there. Counter right and left hook. Real good round from Estrada, competitive, but a good one for him, and he needed it. Fight changing round for Juan Francisco Estrada, but he had to absorb some punishment to put it in the bank. Recuperate, 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 because that's the urine you have to work at. That's the only thing we can do. Give me the water. The, the towel on the floor. All right, you gotta be strong. You gotta be strong and you gotta attack the body. Okay. okay, left and right. I want you to throw a straight left and then the right hook. A lot of left. Here we see another exchange from both fighters and another slip, this time from Estrada. Great call from Jack Reed. Here we see a vicious exchange from both guys. Big left hand from Sorun Visai. A big right uppercut from Estrada. And another big left from Sorun Visai. 
This is a battle in a brawl tonight. In round eight, Estrada landed a fight high, 14 power shots. Biggest number for him. You saw the tactical adjustment. You saw him coming forward. You saw him getting closer to Sorum Visai. You saw him taking risks. Sorum Visai has not gotten him on the ropes where you figured he'd want a guy like Estrada. But he's done very good work in the middle of the ring. Sorum Visai in the early rounds tried, but if you watch, Estrada gave him lateral movement. He kept the puncher moving. It kept his feet unstable. So Sorum Visai didn't feel comfortable in that type of setting. for the first time gave me a sense that Soren Bisai may be tiring a little bit. Remember what George Foreman used to say about a tired puncher, Jim? Sometimes that's when he's at his most dangerous. There's no doubt that Estrada has to be alert for this whole fight. I don't care what so how, how tired Soren Bisai look. That's just the name of the game when you're fighting a guy who has bricks in his gloves like Soren Bisai. But Estrada has to keep closing the distance. He has to keep working the body and, and getting in close to Soren Visa if he's going to continue to experience success. You mentioned Marco Antonio Barrera earlier, Max. Remember how in every one of the three Barrera Morales fights, one guy landed, the other guy was desperate to land back immediately. These two guys are competing exactly the same way. Yes, not with the same intensity, but with the same idea, I agree. And it's not the Sorong Visai boxes like Barrera, but as his career has progressed, he's become a championship fighter because he's added nuance to his game, as we've been mentioning. Anytime you fight a puncher, there's silent agreements that you have to make with yourself from round to round that nobody else knows about but you, you and you. Do I want to take this risk? Is it worth it? What if he lands a shot? Can I get knocked out cold? You got to find and summon the strength and the wherewithal to get your stuff off, meaning your offense, the way you need to to put yourself in a position to win. Well, Estrada apparently has done just that because th just then over the last 30 seconds, he started to really box Sorum Visai's ears off. Okay. I like that. Got so a you score score right in front of him. So the opportunity may be there to outbox him. He's, he's landing, which often happens with a very skillful boxer against a puncher. In this case, Estrada being the skillful boxer. By the middle of the fight, he starts to land head snapping shots. He's doing it now. The one Francisco Estrada is in the process of trying to mount the same kind of comeback that reeled in a victory over Carlos Quadras and put him in this position. And we're coming up on round 10. The pivotal event in the fight between Estrada and Quadras last year was Estrada knocking Quadras down with a straight right hand in the 10th round. This looks like a one-point fight to me at this point, to my eyes. Keep back, keep active on your feet. We need you to keep active on your feet. Breathe, 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 breathe. Okay, this is guy. Yeah, see, 10th round, 10th round. 10th round here coming. You gotta give it. Three, Two more rounds. Round 10 of the schedule 12. Teresa gets Sorum Visai, the southpaw, against Juan Francisco Estrada, the conventional fighting boxer puncher stylist. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jim. I got it six rounds to three, 87, 84. Teresa gets Sorum Visai. Jim, I thought that uh, uh, Juan Francisco Estrada had two good rounds in rounds eight and nine to make this fight a little bit closer. But I thought all the early rounds basically went to Sorum Visai because he was the harder hitter. And Juan Francisco Estrada wanted to trade with him in the middle of the round. So anyway, it's getting a little bit closer. I got it six rounds to three. Swiss against so run this side. And I guess, Max, what you would say is that you believe the seventh round was... Uh, the first fight. round I gave to Estrada. I have it five rounds to four, so run this side. So a slight difference there, but a critical difference as we come to round ten. 
Estrada keeps showing Soren V side the straight right, but the shot that he re really wants is the left hook. And Estrada's box well this round again. Andre, he did exactly what you prescribed. He stepped into Sarung Visai's range, but apparently was his range, and took the fight to him, more aggressively applying his counterpunching Mark. skills. Sarung Visai threw a couple of straight left right hands to the body. Now goes back upstairs. Estrada countering once again, as he did through most of the early portions of the fight. They're back into the situation where Estrada is in that middle range distance he's not all the way back he's there to be hit but he's there to try to do damage himself very subtle difference Jim, but i think you're exactly right and that's why as andre pointed out sarung visai is is having success at that range and you take a risk when you decide to fight a puncher like three hit sarung visai in the middle range rather than to stand back in a boxing only position you can't beat a puncher if you don't take risk. You don't get reckless, but you take calculated risk at the right time, at the right range. This could be a really a pivotal round in this fight. It's competitive, so Rung Visai's done much better than he's done in recent rounds. And Estrada, who seemed to turn the momentum of this fight, would probably be well served to rally here in the last 30 seconds. And it's a power boxing round. Again, Estrada is standing close enough to try to do damage. Soren Visai is taking advantage of the opportunity to make contact to try to box in such an effective way that he can put the rounds away. You know, Soren Visai's face is starting to show the effects of Estrada's power shots. His eyes are puffy. When he gets hit, his head is rattling a little bit more. Oh, big right hand. Huge punch. right hand by Sorun Visai to punctuate the round. Coming up immediately following boxing, it's a replay of Real Sports. The closing ceremony for this year's Olympic Games may be tomorrow. But learn why countless United States Olympians over the years have been going dead broke, despite the United States Olympic Committee reporting hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. Hey, there's big baby Jarrell Miller. We'll see him on the undercard April 28th under the Daniel Jacobs uh, appearance. And uh, Andre Ward, what do you think of big baby? Uh, I think he's big. <laughs> <laughs> and he's no baby. <laughs> he's a big boy. Yeah. That was the safe play, and I have to respect it. Now he's definitely got upside. Round 11 of a schedule 12. There was no knockdown in round 10. That's what happened in the Quadras fight last year. So now Estrada sets himself up once again within Sorung Visai's punching range. And you see that Harold Letterman on his Chewy. unofficial card Chewy. stretched the lead back out for Sri against Sorung Visai yeah, in the 10th round, giving him the round. Probably if we asked Harold, he'd say, hey, did you see that giant left hand at the end of the round? That made the difference. Could have easily, I mean, I thought Soren Visai probably won that round anyway. Yeah, it was a big shot, too. So Soren Visai is kind of standing in the middle of the ring and saying, come and get me. And Estrada has no choice at this point other than to try to come and get him. And that makes for action in the last two rounds. That's really been Soren Visai's strategy after the second round, Jim, to kind of bait Estrada into leading at times when it's uncomfortable for him and becoming the counterpuncher himself, Soren Visai. In order to put yourself in that position, you got to win some early rounds. And Theresa Kent Soren Visai was confident enough to believe that he had, whether he had or not. And he's been able to exploit this throughout the fight. I think what Estrada and Nietes showed us tonight Good shot from Solon Visa down the middle. Is that you can be a boxer, you can be crafty, and you can still be extremely tough. The two are not mutually exclusive. You don't have to be reckless and wild uh, and, and call yourself, you know, tough. You can also box and, and use craft and set things up and be as tough as they come. Hey, we've been watching it for years. They call them Mexican stars. Well, that, that's the, the highest level of toughness in boxing because it requires not only 
courage to take shots and exchanges, but the mental discipline, not just to lose your composure and start winging it and start playing to the crowd. And that's really the toughest kind of fighter, Andre. You were the best example for a while in the sport. Well, those are the guys that you see last a long time in the sport. Hard left hand by Soren Bissai. Another combination from Soren Bissai. Strada, I think, is going to have to come up with something dramatic here. Yeah, he's Be searching for an answer. Because I have Soren Bissai already with six rounds won. And Harold has him with seven. Good right hand. But that was set up from two good shots to the body. Okay, both uh, both your scorecard, Max, Good and right hand. scorecard are unofficial. And Soren Bissai goes back in. Seeking to get closer and get hit with a straight right hand. Down the stretch of that round. Juan Francisco Estrada was able to mount a counterattack and landed some solid shots. That might tighten it back up just a little bit. No one. Okay, breathe, breathe. We need you to breathe. Breathe deeply. Breathe deep. Breathe deeply. Breathe, breathe. Last round. Last round. Straight left, right hook. Left, right, left. Left, right, left. Let's go. Give me the Vaseline. Come on, you got to put it in all. Let's go for everything. Go for it all. Don't get up. Let's go. Everything you, every time he bends down, bring him up. Let's go. Let's go. Put it all in. And the clock arrives at midnight on the East Coast, 9 o'clock on the West Coast. And we arrive at the witching hour in every boxing match, round 12 of a schedule 12. A close fight, or so it would appear, between Sri Saketso and Visai and Juan Francisco Estrada for a world premise at 115 pounds. If either fighter has the edge, it would probably be the more powerful Soran Visai, who has been firing sledgehammer shots standing in the middle of the ring throughout the fight. But Juan Francisco Estrada has never stopped trying to counter him and has worked hard to try to create opportunities over the past few rounds, particularly in the second half of the fight. Anything could happen on official scorecards as we come down the stretch. Largely Mexican or Mexican-American crowd in the forum, rooting for Juan Francisco Estrada. You know, I know it doesn't work like this, Jim, but as we're seeing, Sorun Visay is the guy in the lead because of his big power. If you just look at their faces, it tells the story that Estrada has landed the more effective punches. This is a close fight. Hard right hand by Estrada. Farron B-side feels the need to answer back right away. Gets in a hard right hand and a left. Farron B-side landing there. Estrada firing again with the right hand. Looking for one more big shot. Crowd rising. Folks, we could see a 12th round knockout here because they are throwing bombs. A minute and a half to go. Both fighters selling out in the center of the ring. Tremendous action. Crowd on its feet now. Cheering for Estrada. Soren Bisai seems wobbled by the clean shots he's been hit with here. But firing back himself. And said Estrada would need something dramatic. This is pretty dramatic. Is it dramatic enough? The only problem with that, Max, is Soran Visai is hanging right there with him. Yeah, well, he's hanging there, and he's landing big bombs, but he's the worst for the wear this round. I agree with that. said in the beginning neither fighter does a lot of talking in the beginning you know before the fight but when they get in the ring they lay it all on the line and both fighters are doing that here tonight who's the best super flyweight in the world 20 more seconds best round 12 we've seen in a while on hbo's world championship boxing as Suisa gets sore on b-side and juan francisco estrada give everything they've got 
in the closing three minutes of this round. Unbelievable. Estrada did a lot in that 12th, and he won it. Is that enough to win the fight, to escape a loss? Both fighters up on the shoulders up there. Followers. And Estrada's people leaning over the ropes to ask us, how'd you score it, how'd you score it? Do you think we won? What do you think? They're the ones who are close to us. Power punches in round 12. Soren Bisai landed 28 of 112 power shots in the round by CompuBox count. Estrada landed 26 out of 75. So it was Estrada who was somewhat more selective, but Soren Bisai who had the volume. Harold, Harold Letterman scored the 12th round for Estrada, but had Soren Bisai winning the fight. Eight rounds to four, 116 to 112. Harold is unofficial. Harold, we've seen your score, 116, 112, for Sorum Bisai. Who are the three official judges who must make this decision? Okay, Jim. Kathy Leonard, uh, she's judged 10 world title fights. She lives in North Carolina, Jim. They got an awful lot of boxing there, and Kathy has judged 509 fights. Uh, Steve, Steve, uh, Steve Morrow from Hollister, California. He shows 330 fights. Uh, as you see, he shows 40 world title fights. This is a guy that they use a lot of world title fights. And uh, Dave Moretti from Las Vegas, we know him very well. He shows 143 world title fights. We have him judging 970 fights. So, you know, three experienced judges, and uh, hopefully we'll get a good decision. Harold, let me ask you one critical question. Go if, right it, if it's close. You know Dave Moretti, you know him very well. Do you think he has a leaning, generally, toward the pure boxer or the harder puncher? Well, I hope he doesn't. I hope he just scores the fight for the guy who won the fight. I mean, you know, if the, if the boxer won, he's got to score it for the boxer. If the puncher won, he's got to score it for the puncher. So, you know, he's an experienced guy. Let's see what happens. Thank you, Harold. Welcome. Nice job diplomatically on that. Kathy Leonard from North Carolina might be scoring Carolina Duke next Saturday night. Uh, let's go to Michael Buffer to tell us who won this drama. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of super flyweight action, we go to the scorecards. A round of applause for both Juan Francisco Estrada and Fris Lequet Surrundesai. Dave Moretti scores at 114, 114 even. Kathy Leonard has it, 115, 113. Steve Morrow scores it, 117 to 111, to the winner by majority decision. And still, WBC Super Flyweight Champion of the World, three seconds. So a majority decision goes to Suisa Ket Sorun Bisai. I'm not surprised by a score that was even. I'm not surprised by a close score for Sorun Bisai. I'm a little bit surprised by 117-111. Great fight. A rematch may, may be an option somewhere in the future. I'm not sure it'd be fair to either fighter to bring him back for a rematch right away. Final CompuBox numbers. And by the way, Teresa Ketsorung B-side did wind up throwing 95% power punches in the fight. He doesn't box, he bombs. He lands 194 and Estrada lands only five fewer. Estrada lands at a significantly higher percentage because he throws 208 fewer. Sorung Bisai in the middle portions of the fight in particular just kept coming, throwing and throwing and throwing. Total power punches. Soren Bisai lands 39 more and throws 330 more. So that Estrada lands at a significantly higher percentage with his power shots. But it was a flood of power punching from Soren Bisai that ultimately got him the decision. And he stands by now with Max Kellerman. Congratulations on a really tough, hard fought win.
I don't know what the crowd is booing. That was an excellent fight and a fine, close decision. What are your thoughts about this fight? Estrada was a very good fighter. He was a good, strong fighter. I love the style of boxing, and it was a tough fight. We were talking ringside about how you now look better than you've ever looked in your career. What did you bring into this fight that you weren't able to do earlier in your career? Right now, it's because I have the support of Thailand, and I'm thankful to all the Thai people that came. After a good start by you, Estrada seemed to come on and capture the momentum and make it a close fight again. What were you thinking toward the closing rounds of the fight? I was very, very confident that I was winning. But more importantly, I really want to bring this belt back to Thailand, and Thailand it goes. Did you feel that you had something to prove coming in tonight? A lot of people thought Chocolatito won your first fight, and then it was said he was a shot fighter when you knocked him out. But Estrada is in his prime. He's an excellent world-class fighter. Did you feel like you had something to prove coming into this one? I'm very, very thankful that, you know, the, the American people saw me fight, but I'm more thankful that the Thai people had accepted me, and I'm, I'm here to fight for Thailand. Would you fight him again? What's next? I'll fight anybody at 115, and I'll fight Estrada again. Thank you, and congratulations, champ. And congratulations yourself on a, a tough, hard-fought fight. Your reaction to this decision makes it seem as though you thought you won. What do you think of the decision? You know, the people are the judge, and you can hear them that they saw me win, and I thought I won the whole time out. It seemed to me like a fair decision. I would have been okay with a draw, but I could see him winning. Are you satisfied that that's your best effort? Do you think you can do even better in a rematch? You know, if the judges saw it that way, that's what it is. But I felt I won the majority of the rounds. But the people saw what happened. Do you want another one? Yes, no doubt, or I'll fight any other champion. We could see you're disappointed, but as usual, a great effort. It was a pleasure to watch you fight. We hope to see you soon. Jim? All right. Very quickly now, let's take a look at what you saw tonight.